So hello, everybody. I'm Angelo Shelley. Um, I'm a storage provider in Belgium. What I'm trying to do today is I'm going to talk about everything around making deals on the, on the network. So everything related to that, the struggles that I had, the struggles you'll have as a storage provider, and kind of things to consider um, going into being a storage provider in the, in the ecosystem. So um, if you have any questions during my presentation, feel free to raise your hand and we'll address them uh, at that point. Um, here is a quick overview of uh, what we're gonna talk about. So um, let's go. Okay, the current state of making deals on the network. Um, who already is a storage provider knows that it's pretty complex to maintain the infrastructure just to keep it going. Um, if, you're go if you're getting into the ecosystem, there's a lot of information out there, so reach out to the, to the, um, the whole ecosystem network and you know, to, to get that set up, but just right now onboarding deals on top of maintaining the infrastructure is pretty complex. Um, that's just a general statement. Um, a deal in, in, its, you know, in its full use will only be valid for 540 days. Um, I don't know, we're gonna see how that affects the entire deal cycle for certain enterprise customers in a little bit, but 540 days in total is not that long. Then um, to give you an example, um, or like I mentioned in, in, the, in the next bullet, is that if you're just talking to any enterprise customer nowadays, if it's for compliance reasons or it's just because the company requires it, you know, a deal for three years, five years, or even unlimited amount of time is not that weird. So if you look at compliance here for HIPAA, it's like minimum six years, research data is three years, depending on, you know, what, what you're doing. Um, and then the other part is, I don't know if everybody was here uh, this morning or read about the Phil Plus um, solution. We are basically offering the storage for free right now on top of all the work you need to do um, to make it, that deal happen. And I don't want to sound alarming or you know, not encourage everybody to get into the network, but I just want to address that at this point, the storage is basically free, or there's even situations where um, we're paying the customer to store that data at that point. Okay, um, like I said, um, after the 540 days, the deal expires. So what do you need to do at that point is, you made a deal with a customer for, you know, for instance, to store it for three years. At that point, you will be, you have that deal going for 540 days, you have it stored on your infrastructure, it expires, that's just what it does. And at that certain point, you need to reseal it or putting it, you know, pulling it back through your pipeline and getting it in your infrastructure again. So that will be 540 days on top of that, which makes it a, like, on the, on the example, 1,080 days, which is still not three years. So my point here is that you will be resealing your data um, over and over till you get to that certain amount of time that you discussed with your customer to make that deal happen. Um, here, it's, it's just an example on what you need to do as a storage provider for you know, your, your whole um, economics to work out for you. So, then there is the other, um, uh, to give you an example, um, right now in the ecosystem, we had the slingshot period where we were storing data for a lot of, uh, you know, public data sets and they also are starting expire now because that's like 540 days ago. That's so where we have the Evergreen program. I put the link on there. Um, it's a very good incentive to start resealing the data and what you see there is that it is ac exactly what it is. It's like after four, 540 days, you need to start putting in the work again that you did 540 days ago. So as everybody saw, my, <laughs> the title for my uh, presentation was why you should charge for storage. It's not necessarily for the storage that you're selling, but you're putting in a lot of work to service, to, to deliver that service for your customer. That's my point. Um, so, 
okay, when I had several conversations with uh, customers at Linux, I told them from the beginning that the storage is free. And they were all a little bit like anxious. They think it's weird that we're giving storage away for free. Um, which if you think about it, usually like when you give something away for free, it's like watch the catch, you know. You have the whole, you know, at, at Google, they give you everything for free, but you're basically selling your personal data to them or whatever. So they will be asking like all these kinds of questions, um, why that is. You'll explain to them why that is. I won't get into the details of all that. That's a whole other longer conversation, but we can do that offline if anybody wants that. But they're like talking to you what we can do for them. Um, especially because when you're talking to an enterprise customer, they want to store it longer than the 540 days. And that's always when the conversation starts. So it's like, are you offering the service to them? Do they need to like seal that data themselves after 540 days? It depends on what you want to do. But you can charge for that service if you want to or not, depending on what you're offering them. So another highlight that I want to point out, and I don't know if you can read that pretty good, um, is that, for instance, as an enterprise customer, uh, as an enterprise uh, storage provider, um, comparing to all the cloud providers out there, you are on top of storing the data for free, you're giving them the retrieval for free, which as you can see on, on, this, on the comparison that I made a couple of weeks ago, is that any other cl cloud storage provider out there is charging for egress data. Uh, egress data is the data that you pull out the network where you stored it, so you can put it for free at AWS. I would love to see your data, but when you're pulling it out, you're paying for it. When you do that at the ecosystem within Filecoin, right now retrieval is also free. So all, all of that on top of the work you're doing is what makes me think that you should charge for storage at this point, or what you're doing. Um, so to give you just an example on how we solve that at Linux, call it a Linux model, it's not really that great of a name, but um, making a deal for um, seven years, which is 2,555 uh, 2, days, what we did was kind of like agree with the customer. It's like we made we make storage deal with you. You're paying for um, let's say the entire seven years, a certain price. You discuss it, but you won't start paying before the 541st day. So basically, the entire first deal period, because you're leveraging Phil Plus, you you will give it to them for free. At that point. Um, you start you start that discussion again because your service you're, you're putting that service again out there for resealing it. So depending on if that structure is still there, the fill plus structure, you can still continue to give it to them for free, or you n negotiate or not negotiate. You just continue with your contract that you made, and they will pay you for your storage. Um, Let's see, um, oh yeah, the other point I wanted to make is several customers when I'm talking to them is like, okay, storage is super expensive out there. I'll show you in the next slide how expensive it is on AWS or Google or uh, something else. Customers are already happy if they hear, oh, cold storage, you can do that for 10% less. I'm already paying 100 grand or 200 grand a year just to store my tape backups in the cloud or whatever you want to do because they transitioned from magnetic tapes to, to, to storage. Um, they put that in the cloud, putting it in near line stor uh, cold storage or blob storage or glacier, whatever you want to call it. So if you can take off 10 to 20% of that, they're already super happy. Why do you take off 100%? Wow, that, so that's just up to you, in my opinion. Here's the example um, that I made. Um, so this is a comparison between AWS, Google, and Azure. What you're paying for one tip a month. So if you look at AWS, that's $6 a month, $9 a month for one tip. So if you're pu putting in 100 tips right there, that's a lot of money a month. 
and I'm not talking about um, just storing it. You know, if you if you look here, if you go back, if this works, you can see that, for instance, pulling out 50 tips of data doesn't matter how long it takes, and you pull it out, AWS will set you back four grand. So on top of what you're already paying here, which is, you know, or just put in like a mix of 10 gig and some read and writes, um, that will, will really add up at a certain point. And what we, right now at Linux, we're at $3 a tip. What we discuss with customers, that's usually, and that's all in um, to give you an idea. So I'm not saying you need to charge $3 a tip. That's not what I'm saying your business model needs to make sense for you. If you want to leverage Phil Plus completely, give it away for free, well, you're not giving it away, you're working for it. But, or you want to charge $5 or $10 a month, which is still a lot cheaper than what's out there, that's your business model you need to work with. What I'm trying to say is that you are a, a cloud storage provider at this point, you're selling storage. The ecosystem, if I can name it that way, is not going to sell it for you. You're the, you're the seller. You need to create that pipeline, that sales pipeline for you. The ecosystem is, is here to support you with all, everything you need, but the, the, the exact um, sales cycle is basically a Web2 model. Let's put it that way. Um, it's, it's, it's not going to change. A customer... When I tell them you can just choose any storage provider you want, they will still not want to do that. They want to talk to somebody they know, they want to see a face, they want to negotiate SLAs, they want to negotiate a contract, they want to know the company they're working with. Um, for instance, if they're storing very important data, a company that's only been out for like a year or two years, which the ecosystem is, they might not trust it because they want to store it at a, at a company with much more credibility than two years. So these are all questions you will get while you're making deals with your enterprise customers. And the other part is, like I said, you charge nothing. So something just to think about. Um, I like it the way it is, don't get me wrong. I like the storage being free. I leverage it myself. I use Phil Plus as much as I can. So it's not it's not wrong to do. The ecosystem is built that way. There's a lot of incentives right now to to work um with it. Um like you saw in the in the morning, um a lot of opportunity. So how how are storage providers going to survive the future? That's the big question right now. Um you know FVM is coming, it's something that will attract a lot to the network. Will we shift from a more offline market, what it is right now, wholesale, to a more online market? It's a big question that I have, um, something to think about. And with that, I will close it here. So if there are any questions. Less of a question, more comments. Uh, I'm curious how you think about sort of like different revenue streams. So obviously like block rewards is like one portion. And today when we purely have just like storage deals, it's really like, okay, block rewards or do I also have a storage fee as a second revenue stream? Which especially if token prices are super volatile, that can like guarantee you some income to cover your costs, which makes a ton of sense. Uh, I think once the FEM comes online, now we're talking about a different source of like revenue fees. People are gonna be running hopefully a bunch of like DeFi things. We're gonna see all the MEV stuff probably take off as well. And so I'm curious how you're thinking about as different stages of the network life cycle sort of manifest, sort of that transition between like which revenue stream is most important to make sure at least operational costs are covered. Cause like when the block reward is super high and like valuable, obviously that can cover everything. And so that means that you're willing to maybe loss lead on like actually storing data when the block reward is lower, maybe it makes sense to start charging to make sure you're covering the operational costs, et cetera, et cetera. How are you thinking about those different like revenue streams and then at different points, whether it's like Filecoin price or even activity on the network, how you would transition between those three? 
Um, that sounds like I need a week to prep for that question, but um, <laughs> let's see. Um, what I think is important, just purely from my uh, storage provider solution, let's put it that way, is like you said, the block rewards will go down. That, that will just happen. You know, that's, that's happening right now. Um, so there will be less revenue, so you'll have to scale more. So you'll have to invest more in your infrastructure at that point. So you'll have to offset that somehow. At that, at that point, I hope we're that far that in the ecosystem there are not of enough services in combination with FVM or not, doesn't really matter, that will create that revenue stream for you that you can just charge for storage, even if it's just a little bit. So I think it's a hybrid model. Um, I also think about that Web3 the way it is right now cannot live without a Web2 model. I think it should be a hybrid model. So in a way, leveraging Phil Plus with the block rewards in combination with the service you create around your uh, storage provider solution, that combination is, I think, most future-proof. I don't know if that answers your question a little bit. Yeah. How are you thinking about vertical specialization? You know, as you, as you think about healthcare data or media and entertainment that have specific compliance issues, you know, I can see that storage providers might specialize, and I'm curious what your thoughts are on the ROI of going through that process and being able to charge perhaps more due to those value-add services that you're offering that maybe other SPs are not? Okay, um, that's a good question. I did a talk about GDPR at ASPA a couple of weeks ago, or a couple of months ago <laughs> already. Um, I can talk about that. It's also compliancy. Um, what I think is that that's the future. Like, if you just look at IT in general, you used to know everything back in the day but that's just not viable anymore. So specialization in certain areas, the same with compliancy, is, it's, I think it's gonna be a service which you can sell on top of something that is free or very cheap to create a revenue model to make sense for you. So I do think it's a, it's a good way to specialize that way. And also, um, not everybody will be doing that. So, yeah, I think that's a... I have a question. Is is anyone like charging right now that is storing data? Oh, you are? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. So what is your price? No, oh, was that $3? That's uh, $3, I guess. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, so you're yeah. getting extra money. $3, yes, in the pocket. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I kind of cheated because I knew the answer to that. <laughs> anyway, so proof that it's possible. It's um, definitely possible. Yeah. Like Linux is a smaller service, a storage provider in Europe. Been doing hosting solutions for 20 years now. And you know a website doesn't have that much data, so the backup itself is not going to be that large scale. But, you know, talking to the customers that I have, uh, so just a couple of thousand customers, several of them had, have, like, uh, data they want to have stored from their, especially, like, accounting software they have online or stuff like that, keeping track of that. So they, they do see that putting that on a, let's put it, uh, like, a storage solution comparable to the tapes they used to use or, you know, cloud, uh, leveraging cloud cold storage, um, that makes sense for them because that would take off 50% of the cost at that point. Awesome. There was uh, some discussions earlier with some other people here in the room to like um, even like share the rewards and you know with the customer with the end customer. I don't know if you've tried that. Oh yeah, I <laughs> I think I mentioned that. No, <laughs> yeah, probably didn't. But... Um, it is what I put here too. I didn't mention it that much, but it's the rebate solution, like I called it. Um, what I did is, it's actually just one customer that I have it with, I'm not going to lie, it's, not, it's just not 100 customers or anything, but we kind of came up with a solution. He says, look, I'll just pay for your storage, not a problem, uh, which I think is, you know, great. We're archiving uh, data in Filecoin and we're putting just data in, 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 in Google at this point. And he's like, after 540 uh, days or longer, we, it's like a seven-year deal right now, we will see every year how much block rewards I made on top of his storage and we'll have a rebate program right now. It's, 
I think it's 30% around something like that that it will get back credited to his to this account. So. All right, very nice. Yeah. Cool. Very good presentation, by the way. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, in speaking about the compliance premium, mm -hmm. so GDPR is good. I deal with it. In the U.S., we would have HIPAA, uh, SOX, yeah. PCI. What would you say the premium is on the percentage on that if we were to go after that and price it? Well, um, from a European perspective. Okay. Well, I used to work for a company that builds data centers and does uh, software solutions for government agencies. In my opinion, those services are always overpriced. So actually, you can ask whatever you want. Is my opinion. Um, so in that regard, if you have, if you can make that service model and you, uh, sellable to a customer you can make a lot more money on top of that than you're making with your storage. So it's all about creating a certain model around what you're already doing. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? 20%? <laughs> I, th I think it would be the full 100% if you want to be, if I want to be honest, yeah. I think you can recover everything you have on just being doing that service, yeah. 